So welcome to Building Michigan State 2028. Uh, as I started to do uh, last season, a couple seasons ago, whatever, our recruiting board is already set up and uh, set up a little bit differently because now I, I, I did do a little bit of additional scouting and three stars at the end of this, but these four stars here at the top of the board, these six gems were all just in my initial uh, look at it. We scouted them. Now, I really have started to see that gem doesn't really mean much of anything and it's more and it's something i haven't even really looked at it's the skill cap for each attribute that your player is going to have as to how good they may or may not be um so we might do a little bit of that starting next season or maybe even this season probably not because i don't really want to waste the time on it now but um that'll give us a little bit of a better idea as to how good a player is going to get but uh, this is how our recruiting board shapes up. We don't need any more wide receivers. This is not a position to need. But a four-star gem of a deep threat could be an absolute game breaker for us. Jason Wall, the right tackle. Larry Raynaud, right guard. Lamar Corn, the center. Because really, I think that and now, as much as the defense does need help, and they do get a little bit of help if we can land these guys, Jimmy Van Ginkle and Elias Jose, um that we can uh you know help them out but the offensive line uh, also is going to be a big part of this team's future we always want to have a good top offensive line um certainly don't want our quarterback getting smashed and with us having a field general quarterback right now at least for this season and next um we got to protect him we got to give him time to uh find uh receivers down the field and if we can't do that then things are going to go wrong but I think we got a good uh, good start here on this. We did add two five stars to the recruiting class in quarterback Alex Dixon, who even though we lead here early, I have no hopes, uh, at least in my own head, of landing. But then also Rico Stokes, and this is already not looking very good. He is uh, favoring Michigan very early on. We do have a four-star quarterback out here, another field general, um, because our quarterback right now, Chris Harris, being a field general and the growth that he's seen, I don't know. I really think that maybe that's the move for us. This name kind of scares me, but uh, I feel like uh, he has to be here. Got good four-star right tackle talent. That'd be great. And there's really not a lot of three stars on the board right now. In fact, there are only four. A left tackle, a linebacker, a running back. And actually, there's only three. Skronik here is a wide receiver, so... That is our early recruiting board. Uh, hopefully, recruiting goes a lot like it did in year four, where we're pretty much done with it by the end of the regular season. And then I don't know if we touched on this last time, but remember those safeties that we added to the class quite late? These incoming freshmen. Now, they're not all going to be great, uh, great news for us. But a good chunk of them are Kyle Vales. He's only impact. He is getting redshirted. Um, that's okay. We don't really need him. They're all quite low on the depth chart right now. David Vincent is where things start to change. He is also getting redshirted. Elite development. And actually, if we come in here, we can look at the caps here. His IQ is capped out. And his hands are capped out. That power... Could be really nice, and his pass coverage could be absolutely nuts. And run support as well. He could be a real all-around safety for us. So there's David Vincent. And then I can't remember if Byron Neighbors was another one. Yeah, he was. Elite development. We got... I don't think we got a single elite dev in any of the other positions that we recruited. But safety, we did. And then we head into Dean Stingley here, who was another one of those players who were just sitting there, four stars. I'm like, hey, let's add these guys to the board. Three of them, all three of them that we added there late. The last four stars that I really think we possibly could have found were all elite development. Now, Stingley, run support, pass coverage, a little bit scary. Uh, hands, however, and quickness. That could be an elite thing. And he might actually be a little bit more of a corner. At least looking at that. 
But the good news is that we got three elite development safeties and only two of them get to start. So eventually somebody's going to move over to corner. So nothing else left to do before we simulate uh, Middle Tennessee State at Michigan State. See if uh, MSU football can get a little bit of revenge for MSU basketball from a few years back. What is wrong with this team? 27. 24 loss to Middle Tennessee State. What the fuck are we doing? Dude, these are the only schools we can beat of our 14 wins through four years here. The max schools are some of the only ones we can beat. That in Indiana. And like a stray win in the Big Ten somewhere else. What are we doing? Hit the button. Where's the button? Come on. What are we doing? This has got to affect recruiting as well. Now, the good news is, is that we do still have a pretty big lead there on Odom. Got a lead on Wall. Lead on Raynon. Lead on Corn, Lead on Van Ginkel. And we did get jumped here on Elias Jose. Why am I not... Why am I only spending 25 points here on these guys? You know what? Do we have any points? Oh, okay. So, Spalding and Avilas. Two of the three three-stars have locked us out. Seagal was a three-star jam. We're not spending any points on that. Let's take a look here. Wide receiver. I want that wide receiver bad. Do we have anybody else in there? No. So then, right tackle. Do we have a four-star right tackle that isn't a gem? You know what, Mitch? Your name scares me, so away you go. We'll save those points. We'll distribute them uh, elsewhere. And another one to give us 75 points to kind of bounce around those guys up there at the top. Um, let's also get rid of... Let's take a look at their scouting. Pass block is quite low here for Galette. Run block power is fine. Run blocks at 77. What about Treore? Not much better, but I feel like I like Treor, Treore, Treor more. Ah, yeah, let's get rid of Galette. <clears throat> so 75 points. We really also should uh, spread the wealth here on Lamar Corn, if at all possible. So let's go into these guys. Jose, back that off. We have 125 hours to spend here. So we're at least going to be able to send the house on both of them. We're going to be able to give them 10 more. And then you know what? I think we send the other five over here to Raynaud. <clears throat> Fuck me. Got some points freed up in recruiting. Is this good or bad? Elias Jose. Yeah, we waited a little bit too long to make that move. I didn't really catch it that we only had 25 hours there on him. So we missed out on one of these gems. But with that freed up... Ooh, would you look at this on Bryce Odom. If we give him... As much as we can, I think we get a commit this week. There's no visits to worry about. That would be an early win in the recruiting class. Not like it's mattered much at all so far here uh, in building Michigan State. And then also Jason Wall. Same deal. Give him everything that he wants. Raynaud, he's close as well. We're not going to be able to do this for all of them. I don't believe... Unless we were to take away five from somebody else. And then what about Van Ginkel? Van Ginkel's already just about maxed out. We're already inside the top three here. And we only have to worry about West Virginia there with a visit. Unless Kentucky swoops in. So, he's he's probably fine. So, I need to find five hours to skimp away from somebody else. Skronik locked us out. That's not a surprise. 
And truth be truth be told, I really don't think there is any. So I guess I guess we're just gonna go in with 15. We'll have 65 of the 75 hours spent. And then we can dump five on Van Ginkle. We could dump five on Raynaud. We got a visit with Cincinnati upcoming in week eight. We're a long ways away from that. I really think that Notre Dame is heavier. Oh, wait. we No, we can't spend points on Raynaud. It's... No. Nope. All those guys are maxed out, so it's... Corn and Van Ginkle. And Corn have already done that. So I guess they're going to Jimmy Van Ginkle. There is a there is a chance. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but there's a chance we land all five of these guys this week. We start Big Ten play one and oh. Granted, it is against Purdue. But it is a five point win and our second win on the year. Now we take on number 19 USC at home. Oh, yeah. That worked out just how I wanted it to. We had six four-star gems up at the top of our board. We just landed five of them in one week. And all it, take, and all it took was beating Purdue. So this is huge. Now, I think we're going to be a little bit too far behind here on uh, Alec Trusnick. Um, I just don't see a way, especially because we can only give him five. Unless we wanted to try and sway him. Or not, we can't even sway him. We can soft sell him. I just don't think that that's going to be enough. I mean, the grades are fairly good. They're all Bs. Bs or B pluses or whatever. But I don't think that's going to be enough. Is it going to stop us from trying? Of course not. Ooh, however... Five-star scrambler quarterback, number four in the class at the position, is really close to committing here. So that 10 points, we can say, fuck that, and bring in those 25. And I think we're going to land a five-star quarterback here unless some absolute craziness happens. Rico Stokes, this was a losing battle from the very beginning. I'll dump five hours because we have it here. Eric Upshaw. We're also going to be able... We're probably going to get two quarterbacks uh, here in this class. Upshaw, I'm not sure, is uh, really ever going to play, but it's all going to depend on development and all that. Treore, very early here. But really, with only 17 targets left on our board, we can be quite aggressive with the ones that are left. Hope to get them all set up. And then, I mean, because the majority of the players that are left here on the board are indeed four stars. Now, they're just no no, no gems, but um, still, I mean, that could be uh, just absolutely massive. We're not going to be able to get everybody unless we maybe try and think about maybe taking away... F uh, you know what? Let's do that. I, we're not going to get Rico Stokes anyway. We really should just take all of his hours off. We'll, we'll chalk that up to a losing battle. And we will go down here towards the bottom of the board where we still have a chance at these guys. Give ourselves a chance. That's all we're asking. And so we'll send the house on him. We will send the house on the four-star corner in Hall. And then 30 hours to sprinkle around here on these guys towards the bottom. So they will each get 10. And that'll be our recruiting done. But it is shaping up to be a very nice class recruiting-wise. Assuming everybody pans out, which uh, right now here at Michigan State has not been the case. Yeah, we didn't really get blasted by USC, but we do lose by a touchdown. USC now ranked 15th in the country. Now we take on Penn State, who is 1-4 on the season, 0-2 in the Big Ten. And a team that we beat last season. So, um... Really hoping that uh, our players are able to uh, get this one done. Get back to 500. Give ourselves a chance at at least reaching a damn bowl game, man. So how did recruiting go? Oh, we missed out on both of the five stars. Where the f oh, Auburn had a visit, dude. I didn't even see them. I thought that we were second on this, I do believe. Because, yeah, both Alabama and Michigan State 
went down there and he went to we, we went to Auburn because of that visit. So Trusnick goes and then Dixon goes to Alabama, which is really a shock to me. I really thought we had him. Um, no idea what happened there. Since I don't really anticipate having a full class, I'm going to leave him on there just in case anything happens. Um, of course, man, that'd be nice to have. Rico Stokes goes to Michigan. We knew that was going to happen, and he, he could just come off the board, truth be told. But we do get a four-star quarterback in Eric Upshaw. So we do at least have some semblance of a future here at Michigan State. Leading on Treori. Leading on Singleton, albeit slight against Michigan, and they have a visit coming up, which is probably going to sway things. Richard Garnes, big lead over Oregon and USC. To Michael Tam, we lead for now Mississippi State with a visit. Titus Hendricks at middle linebacker. Top five, but that's some beefy competition there. LSU, Texas, Ohio State, Clemson. Oh, boy. So we better rework some uh, stuff here on the guys that we can. But also probably start to think about adding some more guys to the board. It's probably not that late in the season yet to the point that there's no four-star talent out there. But I suppose we'll see. So Treore getting everything that he can get. Same as Singleton, same as Garns and Tam. Now we've maxed out Hendricks. We can give Hall only 70. We do know his interests. Now, the only problem with this is that Coach Prestige is an interest of his, a motivation of his, and that rating is a D, but there's two A pluses in here. Conference Prestige and Proximity to Home. Let's see if we can sell him on that just to, to do everything that we can because we are fairly close. Those visits hopefully not going to matter all that much. Paris Witherspoon. Do we do the same thing? We can at least try it. Let's see what we got. Ooh, we only know one of his interests. But still fairly early on, so you know what? He can just get the uh, 15 hours here. And then Seagal, the three-star gem, who we haven't even touched yet. We'll just send the house on him. And then uh, we're going to head into the prospect list, see if there are any players uh, lingering around for us uh, here to potentially add to this team. <laughs> He's still here. He's still on the board. We, we're in the top three. I guess we'll add him to the board, but I don't think that's going on uh, much of anywhere. Scrambler quarterback. Field general quarterback, Martin Nix. We already got one quarterback and a field general, no less, so I don't think we need that. Another QB. Defensive end. Power rusher. Let's see what we can do. Got another one down here. Davis Braun. Anything to help out this defense. Apparently that's the big problem here for us. But holy fuck. This team cannot do anything in games. So we're back here on Mitch Fogger. <clears throat> that is not probably going to go our way. Kentucky is uh, has got a big lead there on that. So you know what? I'm just going to drop him immediately. That's a losing battle. Uh, but these guys should be so early on that I think we're going to have a chance here. So we add five players to the board. We'll have a little over 100 hours to work on them. I mean, so def defensive end, obviously a very big need for us. We need some commits here in this next week so we can come back down here and try and get these guys and hope that this turns into those safeties that we got in last year's class. And then when it comes to Seth Graves, three-star tight end, you know what? He can just get 10 for now until somebody else commits. So are we expecting any commits? Treore, not there. Singleton, nope. No, no, no. Uh, possibly four-star corner Alec Hall. But really nobody else. So we need that. We need that commit in a bad way. We need just a decision in a bad way on him, regardless of what it what it is. Um, 
So we can have more hours to uh, get those uh, lingering four stars. You know, I think... Back in my early childhood days, when uh, my uncle... Uh, put a winged helmet on me and uh from that point onward i was a michigan fan i think i made the right decision i'm saying it now this is this is depressing this is awful look at the team we have and we can't get it done because we got oh right uh, the scholarships from the previous week okay now it makes sense so we'll head down here towards these bottom guys we got 95 hours to work on them with now so those 25 hours we spent last week, we're upping that to 50 this week. We should have enough to do this, if my math is correct, but I guess we'll see. Uh, not quite. Actually. Oh, right. I forgot that Harper was only a three-star tight end. Okay. So didn't mean to back out. So let's head back in there. And use these final hours wisely. Traore, looking good. Visit with Cincinnati week 12, unless Notre Dame sneaks one in there. Um, I really don't think that that's going to matter all that much. He should be coming to Michigan State. Singleton, we are in a tight battle here with Michigan. This is an offensive tackle, which we've already recruited well. And especially if we get Traore here, it really won't matter all that much. But we would certainly like the options. And Michigan, I think, is just coming off of their visit. So, there is a chance here. We just did move down. And also, Toledo is in here. That's really strange. Uh, however, for the guard, Richard Garnes, we are looking fairly good. Against Oregon and USC, no less. Jamichael Tam, another guard. Looking good, but Mississippi State could really sway some things. With how bad we are on field right now, there is just no reason to do any sort of visits. We are going to lose ground every single time. Uh, Witherspoon. Yeah, I suppose. Oh, wait. No, he cannot get five more. We're going to leave that as is. Three-star gem of a left tackle, Seagal. Still so early on. I'm not really going to mess with that. So... This one's really close. What about Braun? Braun, we're going to need some more action on for sure. So let's do that. And if it means losing out on Augustine, so be it. But we're in the top eight right now. Where are we, actually? Ooh, we're six. Where are we on Braun? Third. So you know what? Take those ten away from Brown. Give them to Augustine instead. Because we've got a lot of ground to make up, and we want to crack that top five. He hasn't even named his top eight yet, but uh, we we certainly want to be top five uh, at all times, dude. I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Why is this offense so bad? Like, are we dealing with injuries or something? Tavares Phoenix. Okay, that really stings. Ben Lockatour at middle linebacker. He's out for three more weeks. Phoenix for six. And then, okay, so some of our better defenders in Lockature and Pete are out right now. And I just don't know if we have much of a rushing attack or much of an offensive attack at all without Tavares Phoenix. So those are three pretty big injuries. I guess it makes sense a little bit more, but, man, I still can't believe we're this bad. Still no move there on Dixon. Deion Singleton, the left tackle, goes to Michigan. But well, we get Garns, we get Tam. I guess we were kind of expecting that, uh, the Michigan commit there. Hendricks has named his top three. Visit with Texas, so a recruiter, uh, a commitment here early is going to be a big one. We already got Alec Hall. Witherspoon is still inside his top five, but we are very close to forcing his top three. Same with Seagal. Big lead here on the four-star defensive end. Basanez? I have no idea. Davis Braun, slight lead. Augustine, a slight lead. Andy Harper. I mean, we've got, we've got the hours to send it on everybody now. So, we might as well try and do that. Well, at least our offense is somewhat back. Our defense, not so much. We have to win out to make a bowl game. Beat 2-6 and six Maryland which we've struggled against teams with a similar record or worse. 
all year long. We have to beat Michigan, who has now two losses uh, and has dropped to sixth in the country. At Michigan, no less. We have to beat Iowa and beat Oregon in Autzen. Yeah, we ain't making a bowl game. Oh, I didn't even come in here after the Maryland loss. Yeah, uh, we are 2-8. and eight. We lost by 11 to Maryland. And actually, one of our closest games of the season was against Michigan, who is now 8-2 and two and still ranked number 6. We have Iowa and Oregon to finish out this uh, season. We need to win one of those two games to not have the worst season in our tenure. I also completely skipped a week of recruiting. Um, it doesn't appear to have affected much of anything. Um, everybody on our board, we continue to lead on. We should be getting some commits here in the next couple weeks. And um, just like last year, it will be a, a season where recruiting is going to be basically done for us uh, after the regular season. Um, pretty much all I'm going to look to add is uh, maybe players out of the portal. How are we only 17th in the Big Ten? Who's worse than this? Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week does go to Kikai Burnett. One sack, four tackles, three TFLs. But we still lost to Iowa. <laughs> that was our only season award of the week. It's a four-point loss to the Hawkeyes once again at home. We are 1-7 in, in the Big Ten. And that win came against Purdue to open Big Ten play. Who is also 2-9, and nine, just like us. Now time for Oregon. And this is a bad Oregon team. 4-7. and seven. We head to Autzen to finish out 2028. Into recruiting. We should have a good chunk of commits from last time. Not really. We get the three-star tight end in Harper. And a couple of two-star tight ends. Or actually one quarterback in there. That was Ishmael. Uh, one two-star tight end in Galette. And I don't know how we didn't get Graves. We're his only offer, and it's just a sliver left. So we're going to get him, too. We're going to have bodies at the tight end position. Chris Augustine, the elusive back, four-star. Big lead, but Auburn and Minnesota with visits that really scare me. And we just can't do anything more right now, unfortunately. We're, we should land Braun this week. We should land Bassanez at some point. Although Alabama with a visit is absolutely terrifying. Some of these players could flip. I'm, I, I, I say we should get them. I don't know. The way this is gone, I have no clue. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's a 2 in 10 season. Our worst in our five-year tenure here at Michigan State. That makes 16 wins in five seasons. Now, Middle Tennessee wound up ranked... Western Michigan finished 6-6. Six and six. Northern Illinois 5-7. and seven. Our lone Big Ten win came against Purdue. And then, from USC, Penn State, Illinois, Minnesota, Maryland, number three, Michigan. And that's the thing. The Big Ten isn't even all that good. And we went 1-8 and eight in Big Ten play. There's one team ranked, and we played them close. We just got blasted by probably one of the worst Oregon teams we're going to see in this dynasty. Dixon is not reopening that commitment to the surprise of nobody. There is one player left on our board that I want. And it is Chris Augustine, the four-star elusive back. Because who the hell knows what Tavares Phoenix is going to do. Um, hoping to get a commit, but once again, he could very well go to Auburn. That visit is uh, terrifying. We do get Chris Augustine. So outside of any uh, additional transfers that I don't know why you would want to come here right now. But um, that's going to be our recruiting class. I think we got 21 players. Um, and with, with Tavares Phoenix, uh, the realization, of course, that he is a receiving back. Um, but also... Uh, who knows what his decision is going to be when it comes to the NFL. He is in the 90 overall uh, bracket, so you always worry about those guys going. So see what happens, but uh, we at least have some semblance of a future at running back. EJ Kamenong, senior out of Cal. 4,300 yards, 44 touchdowns, six picks is your Heisman Trophy winner. Oh, my God. I have officially seen it all. 
Notre Dame in the modern era wins a national championship 38-35 over Oklahoma. Players leaving, not as uh, worried about this as we have been in years past. Jacoby Hicks is one that I expected. Cushenberry, not so much. And the fact that there is zero persuasion chance, even though for a, a fifth and a sixth round pick, is, uh, is just insane. Skakanik wasn't really all that worried. Tyler Lockley, we got some quarterbacks coming in. Lecker Kirker, the freshman, that's not good. David Vincent, pro potential. Pro potential is where we're going wrong. Every season, it seems to be something new. I'm not entirely certain. I want to say David Vincent, wearing number, yeah, where, where's number seven? He was one of those elite players. That was, that's a big L. And I don't, Byron Neighbors could have been as well. I don't really remember. Well, we're going to hope to find some wins in the transfer portal. Are there any to be had? No. Nope. It appears that the only players that are going to be willing to talk to us are two stars. I don't even think we're going to be able to get a three. Negatory. We do have draft results. Jacoby Hicks and Cushenbury both move up from their projected draft rounds. Hicks was projected round five. He goes in round four. And Cushenberry was projected round six, and he went in round four. And now we are going to move on to hopefully a big fucking year in offseason training. Because we did lose a good bit of uh, possible potential, but hopefully the guys that are remaining on this team are enough to do it. All right, training results. Hoping for something big. All right, I swear, I swear to the love of all that is holy. If we can't find a way to, at the bare minimum, make a bowl game with a 90 overall roster, I don't know. I, I don't know what it, it's going to take with this team. In every single season, that I've seen. These 90 overall teams, they're national title contenders. But yet, our offense essentially stays the same at 90 overall. Our defense now rises up to a 90 overall. If we can't contend for the Big Ten, Michigan State is just permanently broken. I don't know. Chris Harris doesn't grow all that much. We didn't really expect him to. Only an 86. Tavares Phoenix is a 95 overall. He did stay without hesitation for his senior season. Ahmad Aguilar. Oh, wow. We have three receiving backs as our top backs. No wonder we suck. Matthew St. John. We're going to need a fullback in the recruiting classes next year. Morgan Lewis and Vi Abushi. Big, big gains. Up to 88s. For both of them, an Oscar choice at an 84. Dylan Volk, 86, not bad. Uh, Sefa Gash, good, 85, it's playable. Oh, we really should, probably should have uh, messed around with position changes, but we can all manage this in the uh, depth chart. 81 overall there. 85 at left guard, those are two seniors. 86 at center, that's a senior. 86 at right guard, a redshirt sophomore. Interesting, but we got plenty of guards here that are playable there that uh, we can move around. So we should have a pretty decent offensive line. And the guys coming in, of course. Merchants in 84. Fashi's up to an 80. John Whittington to an 87 entering his redshirt junior season. Reggie Pete doesn't grow that much. James Mingo is going to have to probably be that secondary guy. Really, uh, we should run more of a 3-4, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, I think we actually already do run a 3-4. Camp Moyer, Kloppenstein, I mean, they're playable at outside linebacker. Ben Lockatour for his senior seasons in 86. And Dimitri Randall at outside linebacker, also in 86. Corner, however, appears to still be our weakness. Ross Durant stays. Vales might have been ass. And then Stingley, I think, is the only one of those elites that has stayed. And we redshirted him, and he didn't really grow at all. He's got a proximity to home deal breaker, so in theory, he's not going anywhere. 
got a freshman kicker in Jason Schultz, redshirt freshman, and a redshirt junior punter in Matt Morton. Up to an 81 overall. But hopefully this is the season where we don't fucking need him. FCS East, Kennesaw State, UL Monroe. That is our schedule non-conference-wise for 2029 because this team can't go six years of Connor Stallion's tenure without a bowl game. 